Praise the Lord, Lighthouse of the Valley family and all of our other viewers out there. God has been good to us. Revival is happening. More folks are wanting to be baptized in Jesus' name. That's a powerful thing. You know we're living in the last days. But God said he would pour out his spirit upon all flesh during that day. That day is now. Here I am with our morning devotions. We're coming up on 12 noon Pacific time. And I'll try and get it out before 12 noon and put it on and post it on. Sometimes I have a little technical issues because I'm technically challenged at times. But we're doing our best and we're doing what God wants us to do during this season. Today I want to talk to us about something that I believe all of us need to adhere to at this particular time in history, and that is harmony. Harmony. For those of you who are music majors, uh, you may understand this, and those of you who know music may understand harmony. Me, I'm just learning. So everything I tell you about harmony, I'm <laughs> hearing secondhand or as I went along the way. I can remember when I was in Bible college, I thought I wanted to learn music. So I went and joined a, a music class. I believe it was music theory. I just jumped straight in there. And the instructor that we had there, he was so tough and he was a perfectionist and he, he was a driver. And he got on the board and he wrote all these notes on the board. And, and while he was writing the notes, everyone in there were music majors and they knew what he was writing. I was probably the only one in that class that didn't know what he was writing, but he just scribbled it real fast. And he said, we know this and we know that and we know this means this. And, and he said, are there any questions as to what I wrote up there? And I raised my hand and I said, Mr. So-and-so, brother so-and-so, I said, I uh, don't understand anything you wrote up there. I'm dropping this class. <laughs> but it was my gift. My gift was to do what I'm doing now, and that's to help break open the scriptures and to unfold what we're doing here and what we should be doing. Harmony. Everyone say harmony. Harmony is so important because, you see, I'm sitting here on a keyboard, my daughter's keyboard, uh, because I wanted to kind of give you an illustration and, and maybe a metaphor of what the Lord is really looking for when he says Harmony or unity is really unity actually brings and sets the stage for harmony because you can have unity coming together. But to get those things to function properly and to have harmony is something totally different. It's just like the notes on this keyboard. If I were just to hit one key. Sounds pretty good. If I were to hit two keys at the same time. Sounds even better. But what about three keys, a chord? Much better. And that's what the Lord is looking for. I'm going to kind of take this out of context, but yet I'm going to apply it to what we want to do and what we're saying here. And that is the Lord said through Solomon. He said, two are better than one. That means if you have an issue going on or you need some work to be done, you can get more for your reward if you have two people and two minds coming together. And then if you actually have a conflict or something like that with someone or you go into war like we're in right now, it says you can go back to back with someone else and, someone else and you can prevail. So two are better than one. And then he went on to say that three fold cord is not easily broken. In other words, that strand, I know he's talking about a strand and a cord and, and rope, but the same thing here. If we have two or three of us, as Jesus said, just two of you or just three of you gathering in my name, unity, but then begin to call on his name. There I am in the midst of you. So the Lord is with us. And I believe even though we're separated from being able to congregate together and get together, I believe that we're stronger now because we're reaching more people, more people are turning, tuning in, more people are coming aware of where we're at in history, and we're here to be the light of the world, the salt of the earth, and all of that. So the only way we're going to really accomplish this is to have harmony. I want to quote you a scripture out of here, Psalm 133, verse 1 through 2. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. The Lord said, how wonderful and pleasant, he's speaking through David, but how wonderful and pleasant it is when brothers live together in harmony. Everyone say harmony. Harmony is as precious as the anointing oil that was poured over Aaron's head. That was the priest of the day, the high priest. The Aaron's head that ran down, notice, his 
speared unto the border of his robe all the way to the ground. That's how pleasant and that's how precious it is to the Lord when we operate in harmony. Harmony does three things, and I'm going to get out of your way on our devotion. I want to talk about that. Harmony does three things. Number one, harmony or unity. It pleases God. He said how wonderful and pleasant it is. Who do you think it is pleasant in the sight of? It's pleasant in the sight of God. How do I know that? Well, the scripture tells us that he hates a few things, and one of the things he hates is sowing discord among each other. So if we're having discord or we don't have unity and harmony among each other, the Lord hates that type of behavior. So with, in contrast, oh, he just loves and how pleasant it is to him when we have harmony. See, harmony is in, in bringing notes together. It's not about uh, trying to change the other person to be just like you. But what it is, is taking your talents, your gifts and who you are and submitting it to the greater whole that it can be put together to bring out a nice sound, harmonizing sound, a symphony, an orchestra, something that's going, they're, they're totally different. They have different giftings and they have different responsibilities, but yet you bring them all together and it sounds like something that's pleasing. And, and when the Lord sees us come together, he sees that we're individuals, we have individual ways and everything, but we submit it to the greater good. And for the whole of the body, what happens is we have harmony. You'll notice on the day of Pentecost, when they got together, the Bible says they were in, they were in the upper room. Act, read about it. Acts chapter 2. And they got in the upper room. They were in one place, in one accord, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven. And that's, that's so powerful. There came a sound from heaven. There came a sound from heaven because there was unity, because there was harmony, because they were praying together and they, they, they set aside their differences and their personalities and they just came together in harmony. And all of a sudden there was a sound from heaven heaven. How much more as we get together now and we begin to pray, we begin to seek God and we, we get on the airwaves and we use our gifts and our talents and we put them all together, harmony. And the Lord says, that pleases me. The second thing that harmony does, harmony blesses relationships. In our scripture text here, it says, for harmony is as precious as the anointing oil that was poured over Aaron's head. I'm telling you, this, this is like anointing, the anointing oil. It blesses relationships. When you, you, it says when, when brothers live together in harmony, and, and when you live together in harmony, your brother, your sister, your friends, all of you start getting blessed because there's no division there. And so harmony, it not only pleases God, but it blesses relationships. So if you can set aside all your differences and even within the church and, and, and the church uh, worldwide, and we can come together and we are, I believe that. I believe we are, are coming together and God is pouring out his spirit in a mighty way upon many people. And people are starting to revisit the scripture and come to the knowledge that, man, the book of Acts is where it began and the book of Acts is where it's going to end. Wow. Unity, harmony, and we begin to be blessed when we get together and we allow God to do what he wants to do. Again, and the last thing I want to say about harmony, harmony anoints the whole body. For harmony is as precious as the anointing oil that poured over Aaron's head and ran down his beard unto the border of his robe. In other words, the anointing oil, it began to consecrate, consecrate, consecrate the whole body. And the body I'm talking about is the body of Christ. If you're not part of the body of Christ, the Lord wants you to be part of the body of Christ. And it's just as simple as calling on his name. And once you call on his name and you ask him to come and forgive you of your sin, guess what? He's going to forgive you. He's going to put you in right standing with him. But then once you come in right standing with him, you need to find someone around there in your house or, or a minister or someone else that knows Jesus Christ and have them take you under the water and baptize you in Jesus' name. And guess what will happen? He said, I'll send the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Father, the Comforter. He'll come upon you. The Holy Ghost will come upon you. And you will receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. But all of it comes because of harmony. If we can come together, church, if we can come together, world, if we can come together, brothers and sisters, friends, relatives, neighbors, and associates, if we can come together, guess what God will do? He'll be pleased. Guess what will happen? We will be blessed. Guess what will, be, will happen? We will be anointed, consecrated for the work of God. Let's have harmony. Let me pray for you. 
Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you today for everything that you're doing and how you're doing it. I pray across this whole globe that men and women will come together, whether they have differences about this or that, that they'll lay them aside and they'll look at the most important thing, and that is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I pray that their eyes would be open and enlightened, that they might know Him in the power of His resurrection, even in the fellowship of His suffering. Lord, we thank You and God, we honor You. I pray that, Lord, the divisions between family members, divisions between friends, divisions between leadership, divisions between congregants, divisions between husbands and wives, children and family members of all sort and every rank and every stripe. I pray that, Lord Jesus, that you'll bring them together and you'll allow them to have harmony, that they'll strike a note, they'll strike a chord that is pleasing in your sight, that you would bless them, Lord, in every area of their lives. And Lord, that you would anoint them from the top of their head down to the soles of their feet let them be consecrated for the work of God. I ask this all in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. God bless everyone. We'll see you tomorrow, Lord willing, and have harmony from this point on in Jesus' name.